Assalamu alaikum. Today we'll talk about the covalent bonds. Previously we talked about the ionic bonds and we said that they don't have a materialistic existence because they occur due to electrostatic attraction. On the contrary, the covalent bonds occur due to sharing electrons. For example, If these are two atoms, these are the two outermost energy levels of these atoms, and they share a pair of electrons. The idea is, this pair of electrons spend a time in one atom, and some other time in the second atom. So, the atom, which takes more time, for the electrons to orbit its energy level takes a partial negative charge and the atom with less time takes a partial positive charge. That's because we always know that uh, the atoms which take electrons take a negative charge and the atoms which give electrons take a positive charge. It's not the case in here because both of the atoms take the electrons for some time, so we look to the element of time in here. The atom which takes the electron for a longer time acquires a partial positive charge, and the atom which takes the electrons for a less time takes a partial positive charge. Now the covalent bond has two types. a pure covalent bond and a polar covalent bond. Let's see why do we have two categories, pure and polar covalent bonds. Pure bonds occur between um, molecules that contain atoms of the same type. For example, the oxygen molecule chlorine molecule, hydrogen molecule, and so on. In these molecules, we have atoms. The two atoms are of the same type. Uh, we remember from the last time that the molecules, that their electronegativity is higher than 1.7 are ionic uh, molecules or ionic compounds. And the ones with less than 1.7, these are covalent. So, when we try to calculate the electronegativity of each of these molecules, we will find that, um, for example, in hydrogen, the electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1. So what we do is 2.1, negative 2.1, we get 0. And so on in other uh, molecules. That's why it's a pure covalent. From what we have just mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, the, the time that the electrons spend in each atom will be the same. So, uh, because they are the same atoms. So, this bond will be pure. We will not have any positive or negative partial charges. While in the second type, the polar type, like in hydrogen chloride, like in water, like in ammonia, here we have partial uh, positive charges and partial negative charges. For example, in hydrogen chloride, chlorines electronegativity is 3 and hydrogen's electronegativity is 2.1 so we get uh, the difference in electronegativity which will be 0 0.9 and because the electronegativity of chlorine is high it will uh, attract the electrons for a longer time and we deduce from this that it will have a partial negative charge because it will take the electrons for a longer time than hydrogen 
and accordingly hydrogen will acquire a positive partial charge or partial positive charge. That's the idea of the covalent bonds. And we will notice that always hydrogen acquire a positive uh, partial positive charge in most of the cases because the um, atom of hydrogen is very small, it just contains one orbit, which is the 1s orbit, and it just needs one electron. So this electron will not take much time orbiting the 1s orbit before it goes to the other atom. So always hydrogen will take the less time uh, for orbiting the 1s orbital, and so it will always take a positive partial charge. Finally, we have some theories that explain the covalent bonding, and as the covalent bonding is related to sharing electrons, um, the view of how the covalent bonding took place was very related to the study of the nature of electrons themselves. And as the studies in electrons, uh, or the discoveries of scientists, showed as time went on more about the nature of the electrons, the theories explaining the covalent bonding also changed as time went on. So we have three theories. The first one is the octet rule, or the electron bonding of valency, and the second one is the valence bonding theory, and the third one is the molecular orbital theory. So we will talk about them in order. In the first one is the octet rule, and we will talk about it in the next video. And until then, I thank you for watching and see you.